Welcome to Manufacturing Processes, Machining and Machine Tools Lectures by Prof. Joy G. Tughosh. This is the 12th lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on drilling, drilling machine and related aspects. He will be discussing about drilling, types of drilling machine, drilling machine components, size or specification of a drilling machine, operational setup of drilling, drill jigs, tool holding devices, types of drills, twist drill geometry, and nomenclature, drilling operations, drilling cutting speed and feed and MRR in drilling. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access my videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we will be discussing about drilling, drilling machine tool and uh, about twist drill and the related aspects. So let's start. So what is drilling? Drilling is basically an operation of generating or originating a cylindrical hole. Very important, it should be a cylindrical hole. The cylindrical hole may be a through hole or it may be a blind hole. Uh, uh, it may be of different diameters or it may be drilling may be an operation of already uh, enlarging an already existing hole, cylindrical hole by means of a rotating cutting tool. The cutting tool may be of different diameters in a solid body. And the tool that we use in drilling is called drill tool. Or sometimes it is referred to as drill bit. So similar to drilling or operations that can be performed on a drilling machine apart from drilling are boring, rimming, counter boring, counter sinking, tapping. These are the operations which also are performed on the same drilling machine and are related to drilling operations. So these operations also will be discussing. Now what are the factors or parameters that are very important in order to drill a quality hole? Firstly, the cutting speed is very important, the feed, the diameter of the drill, the application of cutting fluids and its type, ratio of length of diameter to, of the hole, type of the drill tool, and the material properties of the workpiece, the tool material, the rigidity of the work holding devices, and the uses of jigs. These are the factors which are very important. Uh, you have to consider these factors in order to drill a accurately accurate hole. And mind you, drilling is one of the most important and essential uh, operations that is performed in a metal working saw. And it is very difficult to drill a hole of exact size at exact location. It is extremely, extremely difficult to, draw, to drill a exact hole of at exact location. So this requires skill or certain other means which we will be discussing during the lecture so that it is possible to drill such quality holes. Even then, it doesn't matter how, how accurate you are, you cannot drill a perfect circular hole in a perfect location. It is impossible. <clears throat> so what are the different types of drilling machines? The most common type and most simplest of them are called sensitive drill press. Sensitive drill press is basically a machine where the spindle and the drill head uh, are balanced, counterbalanced. Drilling head are counterbalanced so that the amount of load you are applying uh, can be felt by the hand. So the hand is, this feed is provided manually and the amount of load the operator applies on the workpiece can be felt <clears throat> on the palm of the operator. So that's why it's called sensitive drill press. Slight variation to sensitive drill press is upright drill press or simple drill press. 
So here it is intended for larger size workpieces, whereas sensitive drill press was in, intended for a very smaller size uh, workpieces and small holes basically. So here you can drill uh, up to around 50 mm hole diameter can be drilled by this process and it can be bench mounted or floor mounted. Normally it is floor mounted and the table can be moved up and down <coughs> on the column and um, automatic feed can be given and feed stops are also provided to control the amount of feed given during a particular drilling operation. So this can be done in an upright drilling machine. So this is a schematic diagram of an upright drilling machine. You can see the table. The table can move up and down and this is the drill bit. So and there are stops that you can set the stops that means the drill will move up reset distance only. So this is possible in an upright drilling machine. Then we have the radial drilling machine. It is a large drilling machine and it's a production machine. It is mainly used for drilling um, holes in large castings, weldments, forgings, etc. etc. It has a radial arm which is around 3 to 12 feet long and in on this radial arm there is the drill head which can move radially in and radially out. The arm can rotate about 180 degrees uh, so it can cover a wide area and large number of holes can be drilled by positioning the workpiece on the table. So, so this is radial drilling machine. Some images I have of radial drilling machine. You can see this is the arm. This arm uh, can rotate about this column and this drilling head can move in and out. So here this is the radial drilling machine. See so here this is the radial arm which can move in and out. Then we have the multiple spindling drilling machine. In multiple spindling drilling machine is a single motor which supplies the power uh, to all the spindles. So there are multiple spindles are there, that's why it's called multiple spindle. And the RPM of all the spindle will be same. So this is called multiple spindle drilling machine. And we have gang drilling machine. In gang drilling machine, we have several spindles. And the power from each of the spindles are provided separately. That means each of the spindle can run at a different RPM. Now here in this type of machine, actually drilling uh, is followed by several other operations like rimming, boring or tapping or something like that or counter boring or counter sinking. So what normally it is done in industry is that in one station drilling is done and followed by the next operation, the next operation, next operation and the work leaves. So the works enters here in a fixture and moves forward and then leaves. So to such applications, for such applications we use gang drilling machine. Okay, these are some of the drilling machines that we have discussed. So now we'll be discussing the drill components, major components of a sensitive drill press. As you can see in front of you, there is a bed which is normally made of cast iron. On the rear side of the bed, you have a circular a column. The circular column is equivalent to the machine, so that the table can move up and down. On top of the column, we have the drill head. This is called the drill head. <coughs> the drill head consists of the mechanism that is required to drive the spindle or rotate the spindle and the mechanism that is required to feed the spindle. That means the spindle will rotate as well as it will be, it will move down, uh, up and down, it will move up and down. So it is rotating and moving up and down. So it's, uh, it's a mechanism that is used, um, this is called quill assembly mechanism. So we'll be discussing this quill mechanism, uh, assembly mechanism, it's a very interesting mechanism. See the thing is rotating as well as it is moving up and down. So what type of mechanism is capable of providing such motions? We will see that. So uh, the drive mechanism is pretty simple here. The motor supplies the power to the spindle directly using belt pulley arrangement. You can change the combination of the diameter of the belt, uh, diameter of the pulleys and you can change the RPM of the spindle. <coughs> okay, This is the wheel arrangement. This is the wheel arrangement. The video is not working. So here. So the power from this motor is supplied to the cone pulley here and this is the spindle. Spindle carries the drill chuck. So this is rotating. Now <coughs> this chuck, drill, this spindle is mounted on two bearings. This is one bearing here and this is another bearing here apart from the two bearings here. So there are two bearings here and uh, there is a hollow tube. This, uh, this spindle runs through this hollow tube on a bearing. So the it is rotating, the spindle is rotating, but this hollow tube is not rotating because it, it is in on the inside it is, uh, the spindle is held in a bearing. And outside contains, outside of the hollow tube contains a rack. 
Now this rack matches with a pinion gear and this pinion gear is directly mounted to the hand wheel. So this is this weight of coming down is counterbalanced by this hand wheel. So you can feel the weight in your hand. <coughs> so as you are rotating this hand wheel, this will rotate and as this rotates, depending on the direction of rotation, the rack will cause the uh, tube or a hollow tube to move up and down which contains the spindle so the spindle also will move up and down along with the hollow tube so it is rotating inside and as well as it is moving up and down so this is the quill assembly this is how actually taking place this is the pinion which rotates the hollow tube inside there is a bearing on which the spindle is mounted and as you rotate this this will rotate and it will cause it to move up and down depending on the direction of rotation of the hand wheel Okay, how do you specify the drilling machine? You specify the drilling machine by twice the distance between the center of this spindle and the inner face of the column, the maximum length of quill travel, uh, the size of the taper of the spindle, the power of the motor and the number of spindle speed and feed. So these are the basic parameters which you must define to define a drilling machine. Okay, how do you hold a uh, workpiece? <coughs> On the table, you can use vices. Already, I have discussed in shaping machine also. You can use vices. Vices are of various types: uh, plane vice, super base vice, universal vice, angle plates, drill jigs, clamps. I will discuss clamps and bolts are also used. So, I will discuss drill bit in slight details. Drill bits might not be known to you, so I will be discussing drill bits. Okay. Now, drill bits and how do you go about drilling a hole? To for make a hole. Uh, I said it is extremely difficult job to correctly drill a hole at correct position. Now, what the operator normal procedure is that manually, if you are drilling a hole, you will mark it by the check, uh, chalk, a wet chalk, and then it will allow you to dry it. Then um, locate the center of the hole and mark it. Then take it to the table, clamp it, then bring the position of the tool uh, drill. At the or you will use the center drill to make a uh, make a small hole at the center and then you will fit the drill tool and bring it to relative position at the center of the uh, marking and then drill the hole so this is a very very cumbersome process imagine if you have to make uh, four holes in a workpiece and that thousand number of workpiece you have to drill uh, in a day then the fatigue amount of fatigue and the amount of error that may happen uh, amount of rejection that may take place will be huge. So in industry you cannot allow the such type of uh, things to happen. So therefore we use jigs. If a hole is required to be drilled on a large number in the same type of component we use drill jigs. The drill jig performs several performs, uh, functions like it holds the workpiece, it locates the workpiece and guides the tool in correct position. In case the tool in correct position. So, what? How does this function? I'll show you in proper diagram here. This is a model which I have made in Proe. This diagram I have taken from my uh, book Tool Design, um, where I have designed this drill uh, jig. So here, this is the workpiece. In this workpiece, see this hole has to be drilled, and in large number, this has to be drilled. So therefore, it is economical to design and fabricate a drill um, <coughs> jig to hold this workpiece. So here. So there is a slot here in which this workpiece will fit and this clamp can be rotated and clamped here. See places we can clamp this and we can tighten it. And then we reverse this plate. Once you reverse this place you will see there is number of bushes here. So it will reverse and it will place on the table and what the operator has to do is that he has to do nothing but to guide the tool through the bushes. These are the brass bushes and uh, the operator only has to pass through this and you can have you can drill the hole in right position just imagine if a manually a operator has to locate these holes and drill these holes manually it will be very very cumbersome process so that is the um, use of drill uh, drill jig so another drill jig here this is the flange type component where four holes to be uh, constructed on a particular piece cycle diameter so here so what is and there is a spindle here central spindle in which the work is fitted and clamped with a with a C washer and a knob here, C washer and the knob, this is the workpiece and this is the stud in which it is fixed and on top there are four bushes 
so this is a table jig this particular uh, jig is called a table jig it will be placed it has four legs so it will be placed on the table and the operator has to do is the guide the tool through these holes okay how do you hold the tool we can hold jacks so there are various types of jacks uh, key jacks keyless jacks jacks are mainly used for holding drills which are straight shanks tapered shank drills or larger diameter drills are not held in jacks <coughs> So these are chucks, keyless chuck, this is a keyless chuck and this is a kit chuck. Chucks, I repeat, are used for straight sank drills or smaller diameter drills which are which have straight sanks. Okay, for larger diameter drills, we have taper sank and the taper fits to the slip which is of the machine. The machine has a uh, particular uh, taper size. So if your drill sank matches that size, fine. So otherwise, you have to use sockets. If the size is smaller, you will use slip slips. You insert the slips in the uh, tapered slip of the machine, and then you insert the drill <coughs> like that. So this is a slip fitted in the machine slip, and then the tool is inserted. Or you use a socket like this. The socket is inserted in the machine slip, and then you insert the drill in the socket. So this is a directly missing in the machine spindle if the size matches then you can directly fit it and you can see this is a flat end there is a flat end in the slot this flat end this is called tang tang has to fit the slot is a tapered slip and this is removed by a drift you uh, <coughs> machine comes with a drift you insert the drift like this you insert the drift like this and apply apply you know, force here so that it comes down so you got to remove the drill you use the drift so what are the different types of drill the most common type of drill is called the twist drill twist drill has two fluids <coughs> running helically on the body of the drill these two fluids intersect at the point and makes two cutting edges and the smaller diameter twist drills are called jobbers drill smaller diameter twist drills are called jobbers drills now twist drill uh, can be low helix or high helix or standard uh, twist drills normally around 20 degree is low helix around 30 degree is standard and 40 degree is high helix so obviously if it is high helix the cutting efficiency will be high but the strength of the drill will decrease whereas for low helix the strength will be high and for high helix what happens in certain ductile material highly ductile material if you are having a high helix so it tries to grab the material and move ahead so that creates sometimes a problem then we have straight fluid drills the straight fluid drills are extreme case of low helix these are required in highly ductile material like brass uh, so in those type of material uh, this type of uh, drills are suitable then we have uh, three fluted drills or four fluted drills so these have multiple uh, fluids more than two numbers running helically on the body now again as the number of uh, fluids increases the cutting edges increases the cutting efficiency also increases productivity increases okay so this is used for high productivity and you have step drill step drill means the drill has different diameter at different part of the body so for making step holes you require step drills and this is a very interesting drill is there it is called oil hole drill the oil hole drill is a hollow drill and there is a uh, hole running helically along with the fluids and surfacing at the the holes is surfacing at the point now this is very important this is important for making a deep hole now when you are drilling deep hole because of the jamming of the chips the oil does not or the cutting fluid does not reach the point now here for oil hole drills uh, if you uh, pass the cutting fluid through the body through the center of this it will reach the point so this is called oil hole drills so this is center drill to so make center hole punch and then we start drilling okay so we'll discuss the elements of a drill main important points of a drill first is the axis axis is the a line passing through the center of the drill or you can say it is passing through the web of the drill <coughs> you 
it runs through the web and is perpendicular to the diameter it is the center line of the tool the body is uh, this part is called the body it extends from the sand to the point and it contains the fluids that is called the body and this part is called the sank sank may be straight sank it may be tapered in this case it is tapered and at the end of the sank it is uh, flattened this is called tang tang is inserted in this slot so that there is a positive drive so that there is no slip you know, between the spindle and the um, sank and sank is that part of the <coughs> drill which is held uh, to be rotated so you hold the drill by using the sank and then you have the neck this is the relief portion is called the neck between the body and the sank it is called the neck and the fluids fluids are the groups which <coughs> runs helically and intersects uh, at the point to form the cutting <coughs> cutting lips so this is called the uh, fluids the fluids apart from <coughs> forming the cutting lips or cutting edges it has two functions it allows the cutting fluid to reach the point and it allows the chips to move up to the surface of the workpiece so these are the functions of <coughs> fluids face face is the surface where the chip actually impinges and then followed by flank flank is on the other side this is one of the flank that is visible to us so this is the flank other side of the cutting edge is the flank then we have the land land is the cylindrically ground surface on the leading edge <coughs> and where the diameter is maintained so the body is normally relieved so that there the contact as the drill is going down as the drill is going down the contact between the tool and the workpiece is minimum so at that particular edge the contact should be there so that the tool is perfectly aligned to the drilling <coughs> hole uh, so that part is called the land wave wave is the central portion of the uh, drill <coughs> if it is high helix the wave will be of uh, low thickness uh, less diameter and if it is of uh, <coughs> less helix it will be of larger diameter wave determines the strength of the um, drill and the edge chisel is the edge formed by the intersection of the flank is called the chisel edge you can see this is a um, this is the flank surface this is the flank surface intersect at this edge this is called the chisel edge so the cutting edge edges are called the lips the lips are at angle 118 degree normally around 118 degree normally around 118 degree this is length length is this thing the entire length is called the length helix okay helix angle the angle but the leading edge of the this this is the land the leading edge of the land makes with the axis of the drill is called the rake angle is called the rake angle or is called the helix angle and the point angle as i have said this angle is called the point angle the angle between the two lips is called the point angle it is normally around 118 degrees and the lip clearance angle it is measured at the periphery it is measured at the periphery here it is measured at the periphery it is the angle made by the flank and a <coughs> right angle to the drill axis is called the uh, lip clearance angle it is around 12 degree and chisel edge angle is the angle the lip and the chisel edge angle between the lip uh, and the chisel edge. this is the lip and the chisel edge this angle is around 180 130 degree it is around 120 to 135 degrees normally so these are the uh, basic nomenclature of a twist drill and drilling operations we already we have discussed all of drilling operations and uh, related operations to drilling are rimming rimming is operation is basically <coughs> to finish and size a hole uh, which is already drilled finish and size a hole which is already drilled boring whereas uh, sometimes the hole drilled may not be concentric to make the hole concentric we use boring operation and that counter boring operation is to enlarge cylindrically one end of the workpiece so that it provides a solder <coughs> of the um, provides a solder and here the it provides space for the head of the bolt accommodate the head of the bolts and studs okay so these are countersunk drills uh, countersinking drills of different sizes 
uh, what is counter sinking counter sinking is basically conically enlarging one end of the work, workpiece why to accommodate set of like this flat head screws and spot facing machining the surface around the hole for proper setting of the washers etc etc tapping tapping is basically providing the internal making internal threads in a hole is called tapping and lapping is basically an operation of finishing a already made hole using a tool called lap which includes abrasive fine abrasive particles <coughs> so these are the related drilling operations these are some of the uh, drilling operations okay now we move on to the operating condition that is drilling speed fit and <coughs> drilling speed and fit there is no concept of depth of cut in drilling we only deal with speed and fit so drilling speed is this is the peripheral speed with which the drill tool is rotating that means the peripheral speed v will be equal to pi dn by thousand where d is diameter of the drill in mm and n is the rpm with which the drill is rotating so what is the drill fit it is the distance advanced by the tool in one rotation or one revolution of the tool it is distance advanced by the tool per unit revolutions of the tool <coughs> and the feed rate will be the feed into the rpm will give you the feed rate in meter per minute that is the feed velocity in the vertical direction so machining time will be l by n into fr now what is this l L is normally if you make a through hole, if you are making a through hole, if it is a blind hole, this L4 can be neglected. Otherwise, if you are making a through hole, say this point has to pass, say this has to pass here, then only the hole will be completed. The point has to come out completely. So we have an approach length. <coughs> this is the length of the drill point. L3 is the length of the drill point, and L2 is the approach length, and uh, L1 is actually the length of the workpiece and L4 is the over travel, we slightly over travel. So L3 we can find it out as 0.3 diam of the, the diameter and this we can safely assume L2 and L4, L1 will be given to us. We have to assume something, let's say 5 mm each and uh, on each side, this can be assumed. And uh, MMR will be this uh, cross section area, pi by 4 d square into the feed into the RPM. So this will be MRR. So I hope uh, the discussions on drilling is clear to you. If you have any doubts, feel free to contact me and I will try to get the doubts cleared. I hope you have liked the video lecture. Thank you.